So, but the next category I'll talk about, I guess, is the coconut group. Uh, this is, uh, a category that is more modern compared to the other mangoes. Um, coconut mangoes didn't really start to become popular until the Zell hybridization project started making them popular. Uh, the, uh, the coconut flavored one, the name is, is pretty descriptive. Uh, they're very coconut forward. They'll usually have some notes that you'll find in some classically flavored mangoes as well, but you will not detect too much of that floral uh, component that you find in the Thai or the Indo-Chinese hybrids. So, um, but anyway, they, of course, appeal to people that like coconut, people that don't like coconut. There's a minority of people that really dislike coconut that don't like these mangoes. But otherwise, I would say coconut flavored mangoes are overwhelmingly popular. So when we talk about mangoes that have great cross-ethnic appeal, Whereas like Thai flavored mangoes are a little more ethnocentric, coconut flavored mangoes appeal to almost all ethnic groups. And, uh, and this is true actually of a lot of classically flavored mangoes as well. But, um, you know, with the exception of those few people that dislike coconut. So, um, I know anyway, I, this, this little guy, I bought a tree as soon as I tasted one. I was like, I take, okay, give me the tree. So this, it, it was really good. Yeah. Dwarf wine is a little controversial because it has some fiber. It's got a moderate amount of fiber and that doesn't, you know, certain people just hate any kind of fiber, any amount, yeah. even a, a slight amount of it. But there are certainly coconut flavored mangoes that have no fiber. Most of these came out of the Zill hybridization project. So these are mangoes descended originally from a mango called Pettigrew. Mm-hmm. Pettigrew is a very, um, Kind of an odd mango because there's not a lot of direct history behind it. We know where it came from, um, but it was not recorded as to what its parents were thought to be. Um, we now believe it was probably a hybrid of the Molgoba mango and something else. Now, the Molgoba mango is an interesting case in and of itself because that mango can taste different depending on when you pick it and all kinds of stuff. And there are certain moments where you will pick up coconut in the Molgoba. And the Pettigrew mango most likely got that trait from uh, the uh, Molgoba. Now, Pettigrew uh, can sometimes taste like uh, coconut and can sometimes taste like citrus. Yeah. And it passed that trait onto the mango we now call the Gary mango, which came from the, the Zill family property in Boynton Beach. And Gary Zill himself used the Gary as the pollen parent in a lot of his hybrids. Um, he did not hand pollinate them, but he selected varieties, uh, seedlings that had the aroma of the Gary mango. So it passed that coconut trait on to a number of the hybrids, and some of them might have had Pettigrew instead, like the Sugarloaf mango is a very good example of the coconut flavored mango. Might either be Pettigrew or Gary as its parent, um, as its pollen parent, I should say. Edward is its, uh, is its maternal parent. I'll go back to the smell for a yeah. second. Are you so good that you can smell the leaves and get ideas of, of the tree yeah. or smell the fruit? Cause, um, um, yeah, I can. Uh, when I'm in my nursery, sometimes, uh, I brush the leaves on some of the, uh, rootstocks and stuff that we've got there, the t- the tender leaves. Right. And, um, I will, uh, smell and see if I can pick up the aroma of, you know, Torf Wyatt, for example, and I said like this one, Possibly classifying the other group. Its aroma is actually uh, Indian Alfonso, hmm. but its flavor is a little more towards coconut, in my opinion. Um, but like, I can definitely pick up on that stuff when I uh, when I smell the aroma of the sap, either in the form of the crushed leaves or uh, from the sap that's exuding from the stem or the fruit itself when you pick it. So they have distinctive aromas. And, uh, it's, uh, it's hard for me to describe one that the coconut flavored mangoes have, but it's the Gary aroma. You know, it's, it's rather unique. So coconut cream has that. Zill M4 has that. Um, so those are some prominent examples of coconut flavored mangoes. There's one we grow called Zill 4026. It's an unnamed mango. Uh, but from Gary's project, very, very strong coconut flavoring that one. Um, and that's one that's not really propagated in the trade or anything. We've grafted some for folks, but, um, there are not too many. It's, it's, it's a group that doesn't have a lot of examples. Whereas classic, I could cite like hundreds of examples of classic flavored mangoes. I can cite dozens of Thai mangoes, dozens of Indian flavored mangoes, coconut. It's a much shorter list. And that leads us to the next group, which has probably got the shortest list of all, and that is the citrus-flavored mangoes. 